is that there must be some uh, character traits, or there must be some cultural differences between, of course, Iceland and Scotland and Canada. What were some of the things? What were some of the things that you would say, looking at your parents, looking at yourself, uh, 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 um, cultural traits that that exist there that don't exist here? Class system. There's no class system in Iceland. Right. Uh, one family could have an intellectual, an artist, a bus driver. A factory worker, and that's what it was. There was not a class dis distinction. There was no way of talking that was more upper class than another way. So my parents were pretty shocked by the class system in Scotland, mm -hmm. and couldn't they couldn't raise us kids that way. Mm -hmm. My my father's name was Paul, my mother's name was Harpa, mm -hmm. and my sister's name was, is Frida, mm -hmm. and then we had two little brothers. But anyway, they couldn't raise us with any sense of class system because they didn't understand it. So they looked like, I suppose they looked like socialists as well. And in a sense, we were, you know, right. we, we, we thought that everybody should have access to everything. Right. And tell me about these little brothers. Our little brothers were born in Scotland and um, uh, eight years after me. Okay. So there was a sort of a second uh, family. They were brought over to Canada and my sister and I stayed and finished our studies in Scotland. Mm. And uh, Sten, Stenthor and Grimur, we were all named after our grandparents. Oh. Yes. So the three, the three of them all got pagan names. I got a Christian name because Maria is Mary. Oh, okay. um, and Stenthor and Grimur, they were, uh, they're now called Sten and Gim. Mm -hmm. They were brought over as kids to Canada. Right. And didn't um, have quite as much access to the Icelandic language as my sister and I. Right. Do they, are any of your siblings involved in theater or arts? Or my brother, Gim, is a producer for CBC. My brother, Sten, is a fabulous rock musician who's got this day job at the Ministry of Health. <laughs> I don't <know>. Whatever. <laughs> Good for him. And what about your sister? And my sister is, worked at neonatal intensive care, she's a social worker, um, and, uh, did, and then has recently retired up to beautiful Muskoka. And she, she's living in sin with her boyfriend. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> she's, those two have been together for, I don't know, over 30 years or something. Mm -hmm. um, so your family is... Uh, your family is... Um, they traveled. They went from Iceland to Scotland to Canada. Tricultural. Right. Yeah. And uh, so tell me about your... Of course, a lot of what your history, a lot of your life is in your work. And we're going to get to your work in a bit. But talk to me about being a young girl in Scotland. Yeah, I see. I was born in Iceland, and I got sort of my ingredients were born in Iceland, and I got sort of mixed in Scotland, mm -hmm. and I think I got baked in Canada. Yeah, and my the finishing, you know. <laughs> um, I think this is it. Uh, and as a little girl in Scotland, I I learned. I was I I embraced everything. Right. I just took the language in and mixed it in with my Icelandic and. Um, I didn't know that anything was impossible, but I did start to realize, I was quite startled in school, that uh, this, the playground world was pretty harsh and tough, and the, the teachers had leather straps, and you had to behave yourself. There was all sorts of rules, obedience rules, because we didn't have those. We were equals to our parents, and Icelandic children are equals to, their, to the adults. They're, they're, you, they, they address them by their first names. You're, you always have a voice at the dinner table. There's no such thing as being you know, being quiet while the adult is talking. Mm -hmm. So we had to really learn this. And um, what I discovered, I think, in Scotland was that I better um, be tough. So I became a fairly tough little girl, and I also had to look after my sister because she was only 15 months older than me, and she was much gentler than I was. Mm -hmm. So I would have to protect her from bullies. Mm -hmm. She didn't ask me to. Apparently she was found it very embarrassing. She tells me that now, but at the time I thought it was, you know, my role, yeah. I, you know, I yeah. protect her from the police. But um, in Scotland, as my father, because sort of, you know, has continued through his studies, he was a student for a long time, and then he got a job as a professor there at, at Edinburgh University. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were all, we always loved the arts. My, my mother painted and then took up pottery, and we always went to theatre, and... Mm -hmm. Um, I, I wrote a play and forced it on my, I don't know, my grade three class. Yeah. It, was, it was my re-envisioning of the Cinderella story, mm -hmm. which re was all about one of the ugly sisters, because I played her. <laughs> I think, you know what, yeah. I think you might want to revisit that again. I yes, maybe idea. I will. I'll, I'll have a think about that. <laughs> you might want to call yeah. Disney. You might, yeah. have, you might have a, a screenplay. Yes, but, um, yes. And so what, what was it like, what was your teacher's reaction to your, your theatrical ambitions? Was she encouraging or...? 
Um, I think our public school was a bit bemused by, mm -hmm. by but they, they were very proper. They were, you could get piano lessons, you could get, you actually, there was all sorts of lessons that you could get. Mm -hmm. So we went to piano lessons in the school, after school, that was something, you know, the piano teacher would come. Mm -hmm. And I think, um, I, I think in some ways they thought I was, you know, we were a bit, I was a bit weird. Mm -hmm. And, um, uh, and that I, think I, could, I could be forgiven a few things because I was a foreigner. Right. They're always a foreigner. Right. You could not become Scottish and, right. and be called Maria Ardell. That's what they called me until right. I officially changed it to Maya. Hmm. Um, with a mother with a strong accent. And we were terribly embarrassed by a mother as we were trying to become Scottish. You know? right, right. Um, but I, I was very clever. I was very clever at school, so was my sister. We were supposed to be clever. Our father expected, if there was any class system in Iceland, it was about being clever, right. about okay. being smart. Right. And did you struggle with acceptance? Did you, is it, is it something that um, affected your personality even uh, 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 later on? Trying to become, trying to get that identity, trying to fit in at the same time, knowing that you're you're on the outside. Yeah, I think so. I had to um, reinvent reality. I was quite good at that, um, because I actually think that my imagination was more real to me than reality. Mm -hmm. So I would sort of invent um, my, my persona in such a way that everybody would think I was the norm. Right. And then I could gather people around me, and everything would feel normal. But there was always some superior girl. Mm -hmm. it was you know there was the horse club we all had to join the horse club so we could gallop around the playground and leap mm -hmm. over our school bags and mm -hmm. and this you know the, the the kind of the girl who organized the horse club she was more important than i was and i always felt that you mm -hmm. know yeah. um but no i think uh, being a little foreign girl i had to reinvent myself i had in some ways i had to become more um, successfully Scottish than the Scottish kids right. and it was a problem when we were, I came to school in such fabulous outfits that my mother would sew for us because you know I'd be better off in those tight little jumpers and or little ordinary little you know mm -hmm. clothes that the, my friends were wearing. Yeah the moment you stand out they want to take you down a peg. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh that was big yes. Yeah. So I couldn't help standing out though I was just that kind of person. What was happening in music at the time? I was taking piano lessons and I was, uh, I always sang. I learned all the um, Scottish songs. We all had, mm. to, we all had to choir. Right. And I became good at piano and I became, and I was good at singing. And there was the, you know, the poetry contest where you had to speak, you know, Scottish poetry, Burns poetry right. and um, mm -hmm. all that. And that, some of that appeared in, in one of my first the solo play, actually. Some of that competitive stuff about being... Scottish, Scottish, Scottish culture. Right, and also one of the things that appears in your play is a relationship with um, modern music at the time. Did your piano teacher let you play any Beatles songs? No. I didn't know, I didn't know, I did none of that. I had to mm. learn, you know, the Blue Danube and right. all those kind of classical things, you know, and that was in my early years at school. Right. And I, I, I went on to play piano up till I was 16 and then I became officially lazy. <laughs> oh, an officially indigent teenager. <laughs> of course, which every teenager eventually gets to. Mm -hmm. That's a part of the passage. Mm -hmm. You were a fan of the Beatles, you were a fan of like modern music, you, you rebelled, but, but, like at the time that must have been really wild. Were your parents scared at all? That you were no, um, they, uh, they, were, they were impossible to rebel against. They were too cool. They, they had parties, they got drunk, they had mm -hmm. all the Icelanders and all the students would be over at the house and my mother had a when the baby was born, um, she got a pram from somebody, like a big baby carriage, mm -hmm. and it had a big nuclear disarmament sign on the back, and mum went on peace marches, and, you know, they, they were, you couldn't rebel against my parents. They were hopeless. <laughs> that was all you poor thing. Right? But we joined the kind of, you know, I mean, I pushed the limits, of course, you know, you tried all the drugs and, you know, drank too much and, mm -hmm. you know, pushed all the limits. But, I mean, my friends could sleep over at my house and everything would be fine. Right. But, but going over to their houses, oh my God, I mean, you, I just felt like a foreigner the minute I'd walk into mm -hmm. their homes. They were lovely, you know, I mean, people were quite friendly and lovely, but they were, they, I was, you know, a foreigner, I was strange, I was a foreigner. How were you with your kids when they rebelled? Hmm? Oh, I, I, said, I thought, after everything I've done, my kids could never shock me. <laughs> There's nothing they could okay. do. Both they? of them are reasonably well-known um, actors, so I can't say too much. <laughs> um, 
But my son figured out the system and managed to quietly get through his teenagehood without too much trouble. Mm -hmm. My daughter scared the bejesus out of me. Oh, really? And now she's one of the most res respectable, upright citizens I could ever imagine, raising two children in the most beautiful and proper way, cleanest house I ever saw. Mm -hmm. um, I cannot believe she's the same person. Yeah. But she's got her past, and she it will come trickling up in some way, in her creative way, somehow. So I should just chill out, I should just not worry that, you know, my daughter's just going to rebel and that eventually it'll be okay, is that right? Yeah, I mean, I think the most important thing is, um, I, I don't know, some of it gets into my plays, you know, it's like, mm -hmm. you know, oh, I, I'd rather she, you know, I'd rather get, they got pregnant than became a drug addict. You know, yes. like you start choosing, <laughs> exactly. right? Exactly, <laughs> and if they're a drug addict, they're more <laughs> hot than heroin. Yeah. And, you know, yeah, yeah. Wow. Well, um, so, okay, you moved to Canada, and you, uh, how did you become an actress? How, how did that happen? Well, I wanted to be one from birth. Mm. I mean, from, from birth. <laughs> it's good, I like that. I like that, too. Yeah. yeah. No, I mean, about, about five when I announced that I was going to be an actress, and I think mm. I'd seen stuff on, I don't know, maybe film, or mm. maybe seen a little bit of theatre or something, but I was going to be an actress, and my parents thought that was wonderful, because mm. in Iceland, um, it's a great point of pride to be a... A, a, a creative person, mm -hmm. uh, an actor, whatever. Um, so my, I went to theatre school, the Royal Scottish Academy of Music and Drama in mm -hmm. Glasgow, right. and that was a great theatre school, and it sort of spawned a lot of the actors we, you know, one knows today. Mm -hmm. um, and then I came straight. I did a little bit of acting there, very mm -hmm. little, on the Glasgow Citizens Theatre, but came straight to Canada, mm -hmm. thinking that well, Canada doesn't have any culture, and it's you know like. We didn't, we didn't know anything about Canadian culture in Scotland. Mm -hmm. So I'll go to, to New York. I'll visit my family and then go to New York. And, uh, but my first time I came into Toronto, it was full of like hippies and people kind of hanging out and playing the guitar in the street. And there was draft dodgers mm -hmm. all over the place. Mm -hmm. And, oh, it was so thrilling. I thought, oh, this, just, this feels just like San Francisco. Like, we thought San Francisco was like, that was a hot summer in Toronto and people lying around outside the uh, Queen's Park on the grass and, you know, the mm -hmm. smell of marijuana in the air. <laughs> it was um, a time, yeah, yeah, and I went to a, a 12 Alexander Street Toronto Workshop Productions to audition and I walked in there and there were people with headbands that worked there. Mm -hmm. Like, people that looked like hippies were working in theatre. <laughs> So I thought that was amazing. It wasn't like that in Scotland, was it? No, no, no. You wore a suit and tie to your auditions, or you dressed real smart and had a good haircut for your auditions. No. You, yeah, yeah. I mean, but for that was the theatre world. But for me, I mean, uh, my look in Scotland um, was you went, you wore antique clothes. Mm -hmm. We looked like the Goths. Mm -hmm. You know, I had all these antique. I brought a couple of them over with me. But we, we went to the thrift shops and the old mm -hmm. markets and found these fantastic old Edwardian clothes and the boys would wear, well, you know, the slight Sergeant Pepper look, but there would also be a sort of an old, an old fashioned Edwardian mm -hmm. kind of thing. They were starting to wear, you know, things in there and, and mm -hmm. the girls would, I had a wedding dress from Victorian times, I think, maybe not Victorian times, but anyway, mm -hmm. no, it was from about the thirties. I would wear it in the streets, this <laughs> wedding dress, like white satin wedding dress, trailing in the mud behind me as I... <laughs> so you went out of Went trotting off to the parties. <laughs> no, really? Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. So that must have been quite the... Uh, uh, it must have been quite the culture shock to come here and find... Uh, did you feel that you found uh, kindred spirits when you came here? I thought I was in America. Right. You see, people here didn't... They felt so different from the States. But when you came from Europe, right. you came here, you go, oh, it's just like America. Right. right. You know, it's the same kind of cars, same accent. At least that's what I thought it was, the same accent. Right. Yeah. Um, so my culture shock basically was that men, I, the Scottish men were um, predatory. They chase you. They chase you and catch you and you go, no, 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 and then you say yes, right? <laughs> okay. Uh, Canadian men, oh my God, they were so passive. I thought, well, how am I going to get a boyfriend in this country? <laughs> <laughs> oh no, and how did you get a boyfriend in this country? An English boy who knew how to chase me and hunt me down. Oh. We've been together for forty-two years. No, okay. How did you? So how did you meet? He was an actor, wasn't he? Jeff was at Toronto Workshop Productions. Both of us started in Toronto Workshop Productions in nineteen seventy or something like that. I was twenty-one, just turned twenty-one, mm -hmm. and we were picked to be part of this company, George Luscombe's new company, and we trained in the efforts every morning, three hours. 
physical training and then we'd start looking at the plays that we were going to be doing and we would have, I don't know, six or seven weeks rehearsal. Right. We worked five days a week. He gave us one day off to be with family and have a real life and the other day off to learn your lines. So we were the first five day week company. Right. It was a wonderful thing. Mm. Worked incredibly hard those five days. Mm -hmm. And Jeff and I, uh, we kind of hung around in the same company and then Jeff had the good sense to chase me for a while and catch me. <laughs> and what was it about Jeff that you wanted him to catch you? He was cheeky. Mm -hmm. He was cheeky and sort of like, you know, he always had sort of like, he was always up to something. He had that twinkle in his eyes. He wasn't, ha he wasn't sort of honest and good and decent like all those Canadian boys. <laughs> <laughs> well, you were a bad boy, didn't you? Bit, yes, and I think my bad. daughter might have inherited that. Oh, really? <laughs> and that, of course, led to her being scared and henceforth, okay, mm. good to know.